Pani Selvaram, Kundavadavi, and others went to Patela prison and they did not find Vandiyadeva there. Instead they found Panyagapani, the son of a physician. Binagapani was tied to iron rings on the wall. Alas! The murderer has fled. The madman has fled, he cried. Devi and Vanati remembered him very well. Didn't they send him to Kadakare first to accompany Vandiya the van? When Panyagapani was interrogated for his release, he gave a brief account of the events that had taken place there. He was also enraged that the fugitives should be apprehended as soon as possible. But those who heard his story were not so enraged about it. They admired Vandiyadeva's prowess and thought that it was somehow good that he had fled at that time. As Manamegala began to express her thoughts, Kuntava stopped her and said, Sister! Do not speak! This is a great royal matter. What do we girls know about it? Tell me alone what is on your mind. She said. When everyone arrived at the door of the underground prison, the army commander Pariya Velar also arrived there. By then the news had reached his ears that something had gone wrong in the prison. When the commander came to know what had happened, he was not too excited to catch the fugitives. In fact even within his mind there was not the slightest belief about the crime charged against Vandiyadeva. He also knew the admiration that Arulmas Hivarma, Kundavadavi etc. had for Vandiyadeva. Therefore, instead of getting angry, he laughed at Vandiyadeva's wickedness. That monkey boy is very clever. He even managed to escape from Matata prison in Sri Lanka once. Said. The doctor's son interrupted, Sir. Shouldn't you make arrangements to search and capture the fugitives? He said. Ah! Where are they going to escape? It must be within this castle? Let's see! Said Commander Peria Velar. No, no! That murderer knows the tunnel. He will get out through it! He screamed. The general got angry at this and said, You fool! Have you come to tell me the truth? You are the reason for their escape? Did you deliberately join them in this ruse, or what? Catch him and put him back in the dungeon. He said looking at the soldiers standing by. Panyagapani was trembling. No, sir. In truth I am not one of their intrigues. I am sent by the Prime Minister. He complained. Pani's brother-in-law interrupted, Yes, isn't he the Prime Minister's man? Let him be sent to him under proper guard. Let the Prime Minister give him the proper punishment. Said. In the same way, the military commander ordered four of his soldiers to take the son to the Prime Minister Anuradhar and hand him over. When Chief Minister Anuradhar Pinyagapani heard about what happened in the jail, he was not too excited. Anuradha does not entrust only one person for any important task. If he sends one somewhere, he usually sends another to take care of him. He was not worried as he had sent all Workadian even now. He hoped that he would catch the fugitives or at least bring news about them. He also had the thought that if the two fugitives somehow managed to escape without being caught, many troubles would be solved. Therefore, when Pinyagapani narrated what had happened in the nether prison and said, Sir! If you send four men with me, I myself will capture them again. Fool! You've completely ruined the matter. I sent you so that no one outside would know about that madman. Otherwise I wouldn't have gone and fetched him myself. Now many people in the palace know about him. Are you trying to advertise again that that's not enough? Enough of your service. You're only for one job. Go, you wretch. Don't wake up in my face again. Don't tell anyone what happened today. If I find out what you've said, I'll order you to wash," said Anuradha. Panyagapani hung his head and left the chief minister's house. Animosity caused by a subhanga flared up in his heart. All that hostility turned on Vandiyadeva. It was because of him that he had failed and disgraced himself in his work. He had to be scolded by the army chief and the prime minister. If they are all indifferent, let them go. It is his duty to find Vandiyadeva and take revenge. Let the madman run away. Vandiyadeva should not be left alone. 
he has been his enemy since the day he travelled to Kadakare. At last he has done himself this great harm. Find him and take revenge. Panyagapani thus decided and left the fort of Tanjore. He truly believed that Vandiyadeva would not be inside the fort and would have gone through the secret tunnel. But he did not know where the tunnel was or where the outer door opened. However, somewhere in the castle wall there must be the entrance to the secret tunnel. If you go to the side of the wall and look around, maybe you will find it. Why? Vandiyadeva and the madman can be caught even if they are caught with real hands when they come out. With such a thought, Panyagapani was going along the outer bank of the Vadawat by clinging to the wall outside the Tanjore fort. He kept staring carefully at the wall. Some soldiers of Kajumbalar were going around the wall from time to time with torches in hand. The doctor's son still had the badge that marked him as the Prime Minister's man. Therefore, if the players are confronted he can take the tackle away from them. However, his action was delayed. Therefore, whenever the policeman with torches came towards him, he would hide in the trees on the side of the road and come out when they went beyond. Once he was hiding in the bushes when he was startled to see two more people hiding a little distance from him. One of them had a sword in his hand. The light from the torch came through the bushes and a couple of beams fell on the sword, making it glow. But it is not known who were hiding. When the guards were gone the two men came to the bank of the river and walked in the opposite direction from where Panyagapani had gone. Panyagapani went a short distance on his way. Suddenly a doubt arose in his mind. Was Vandiyadeva, who ran away from them, also a madman or what? Why not? He was not at first apprehensive as they approached the castle gate. But Vandiyadeva is very cunning. He who is brave therefore goes with what purpose, or what? So Pinyagapani also turned and followed them at some distance. He did not want to run away and confront someone with a sword in his hand. It is not the time to unnecessarily fight with a stranger. Only after knowing for sure that they are fugitives should anything be done. He had a dagger in his hand. It is better to use it suddenly and finish off his nemesis. There is the northern gate of the fort. Adide. What is all the crowding and protesting there? The palanquins, the devartis, the courtiers before and after. I don't know if someone important is going out or coming back. God! Where are these people? Have you suddenly disappeared? It seems that they have entered the crossroads. Where would they have gone? Have you gone to Rajapat, what? Could the escaped prisoners have been so bold as to go to Rajapat? Otherwise, where could it have gone? Panyagapani remembered that the Nandavan cottage of Sendan Amuthan was there recently. He also knew that Vandiyadeva was hiding there once before. Yes. Yes. They came to God and he was a madman. It seems that they are going to Sendan Amuthan's house. Or I don't know what else that cunning Vandiyadeva has in mind. Sendan went backwards towards the direction of Amutha's Nandavana. Finding your way in the dark is not easy. When he reached the Nandavan after knocking, he was surprised to see the Sivakas and guards there. As he hesitated, not knowing what to do, the chirps left. The guards followed. Panyagapani looked at that Nandavan from all sides. The heads of two horses could be seen on the side of a fence. The interest of the doctor's son grew. He slowly approached the hut. He saw two people standing under a tree and talking. They must be the people they were looking for. Two horses stand ready, how is that? Is someone else, from a larger place, secretly helping them escape, or what? Will the royal family be involved in the plot to escape them? The madman was screaming that he knows some secrets, maybe all this is happening to keep those secrets from being revealed. He looked closely to see who was talking behind the tree. One of them is mad, no doubt. I was able to recognize his raspy voice very well. Then, another person should be Vandiyadeva? But he doesn't look like him? What wonder is this? Doesn't he look like Prince Madhurandhagar? Prince's crown on the head. Pithambaram on the shoulder. Pearl garlands around the neck. Ornaments on hands too. 
What intimate conversation could there be between Mad Hurandha and this madman? Let it be something. Where is Vandiyadevan, his birth enemy? It must be somewhere on the side, no doubt. He is the one who walked with a sword in his hand. Maybe we saw horses on the edge of the fence? Sitting on one of them ready to run? Waiting for the madman to arrive, aha! That's how it should be. It seems that Madhurand Hakkar was responsible for their escape. It seems that Vandiyadeva killed Kari Kalar because of Madhurand Hakkar's instigation. Now before they escape and leave, Madhurand Hakkar seems to be sending a message to the madman. God! If only these things were true and he could prove them to be true? This is how Binagapani's crooked brain worked. It's best to get close to the horses for everything. If Vandiyadeva is alone there, you can see one hand from the dagger in his hand. Later, you can catch this madman and scare him to know the truth. The horses stood beyond the fence directly opposite the tree where the madman and the madman were talking. You cannot get there by bypassing them. There was another lotus pond on the way. So it is better to reach the back of the hut and cross the fence there to join the horses. When Panyagapani went that way and reached the back of the hut, the voice of Sendan Amuthi and the voice of Pungajali fell on his ears. Panyagapani was infatuated with Pungazali when he first met her at Kadakare. It was because of her that his enmity against Vandiyadeva increased. Later, when he went to capture Mandakini, Sendan became upset knowing the friendship between Amuthan and Pungajali. He also had enmity towards Sendan Amuthan. Now, through the small balcony of Panyagapani's hut, Sendan saw Amudan and Punguzali chatting away with their faces beaming with happiness. His enmity with Sendan Amuthan was burning. He went a little closer and listened to their conversation. Their talk about getting married and going to Kadakar fell into his ears. The sound of both of them laughing uproariously together made his enmity rage. See you. Is this dumb flower girl's son going to reach the flower pot at last? Panyagapani could not bear that thought. At that moment he completely forgot about Vandiyadeva and the madman and his intention to catch them. First, the Sentin Amudan who sings this Devaram should be sent away from this earth. Having decided this way, he stood a little aside outside the board and aimed to throw the Kadhiti on Amuthan. Punguzali, who happened to see only the spear and the hand carrying it, shouted wheel. Immediately Sentin Amuthan also looked back at Balagani. Aha! A perfect opportunity to throw a spear at his chest. Panyagapani's hand was about to throw the spear when he heard footsteps behind him. Looking back, a man had arrived very recently. I don't know who he is in the dark. Whoever it is, he knows his purpose and rushes to catch himself. Sentana threw his spear at the runner, which he had bent to throw at Amuthan. The comer fell down. At the same time I heard the sound of two horses taking off. They must be Vandiyadeva and a madman. Then the prince Madhurandagaram might have come to block him in the dark and become the target of his spear. These thoughts flashed through Panyagapani's mind and terrified him. Aha! Oh. Voices arose. I heard the sound of someone coming outside with the door open. Panyagapani ran. The first thing he had to do then was to run away. The second thing was to pursue the runners on horseback. He fell backwards without knowing his feet and ran away. After a few moments Pungazali and Chandan Amuthan came out with a lamp. They saw Vandiyadeva lying in a pool of blood, pierced by a spear. The horror and misery they went through cannot be told. Both of them picked him up with great compassion and took him inside the hut. They took some comfort in knowing that he was not dead. Vani Amai had to do the same treatment he did to Kanamaran earlier to the injured Vandiyathevan.